Once the model is ready for the wash, spray the whole model with at least two coats of gloss varnish. If you intend to use an enamel ink wash, it is imperative that you use an acrylic varnish, or vice versa. This is necessary as part of the cleanup process will use the thinner of the ink wash across the surface, and therefore the opposite based varnish will create a protective barrier. Simply use a brush to apply the ink into all the panel lines trying to minimise any excess. The cleanup process is quite simple. Simply dip a cotton bud into the appropriate thinner, squeezing off any excess so that it is moist but not wet, and then proceed to wipe off the excess ink on the model. You should do this in the direction of the airflow. It is also possible to leave some streaking effects by not cleaning everything off thoroughly. When applying a wash on bare metal finishes, this needs to be done directly onto the metalizer paint without the use of any varnish barriers. If enamel based metalizers were used, such as on the Thunderbolt, then an acrylic based wash is applied. 
This is then removed as before with an acrylic based thinner and cotton buds. If the decal has stubbornly refused to settle into the panel lines, as has been the case with these kit decals, it is possible to gently scribe the panel lines on the decal. 
Apply almost no pressure and be sure not to use the sharp point. Rather, lay the scriber almost flat and retrace the panel line. Now it should be a simple matter to use the wash in the same manner as on the rest of the plane. When applying pigments onto the model dry, it gains the appearance equivalent to dust. This applies for both exhaust, i.e. black pigment, as well as the traditional earthy colours. Be sure to use reference photographs when applying exhaust buildup, as this will assist you with the amount you should apply and how it is affected by airflow. Once applied, it is possible to manipulate the pigment further using the appropriate thinner. It is highly recommended that you use the same brand thinner as the pigments. Gradually build up the pigments. Use some colour variation where appropriate. Another area that the pigments are very useful is on the undercarriage of aircraft, especially pre-jet age ones. Again, gradually build up the effect using photo references as a guide. The lower part of the wheel bay doors should receive a little more attention together with the tyres themselves. Jet aircraft can be weathered in a similar way, but to a significantly lesser extent due to the concrete runways that they use in place of the dirt airfields of the piston era. Use a variety of dust colours to give subtle variation, thereby gaining realism. Another range of weathering products comes from Flory models in the UK. These are acrylic based and are applied on top of a varnish. The light colours are applied first using a fine brush, then with a wide flat brush, moistened with acrylic thinner. The streaks are blended and any excess removed. This is done multiple times with the same or similar colours, gradually building it up. Then the dark colours are very sparingly applied to selective parts, usually closest to the panel lines.
there are many different products on the market. In my opinion, I think it is worthwhile for every modeler to try each of the products at least once to discover what works well for them. Here is one such product which entered the market a few years ago, MIG Productions Rainmarks. This is applied with a fine brush and layers are built up gradually. If you do find that you have built up too much, the excess can be removed with either a paintbrush or a cotton bud using mineral spirits. Once all the other weathering has been completed, the model is now sprayed with a matte varnish. This is done to seal and protect all the hard work that has been done to this point. Usually two coats is sufficient, however, this will depend on the desired level of sheen which you seek for the subject. This brings us to the conclusion of the episode. I hope that you enjoyed watching the various painting and weathering techniques, and that this has been of assistance to improve your future modelling endeavours. For more information on a range of other DVDs, please visit our website. Until next time.